in problem number 34 of section 3.5, we're asked to find the volume obtained by rotating uh, half an ellipse, uh, it's in the upper half plane, about the x-axis. Uh, so if we draw a diagram, which is always a good idea to do in these kinds of problems, just to be able to visualize it a little bit better. If we've got a, um, an ellipse here, so the major axis is the x-axis, um, just in the way, it doesn't necessarily need to be that way, just the way that I'm drawing it. Um, so we've got A and B, and looking at this ellipse and then rotating it around the x-axis. end up with kind of a football shaped object where if we take a cross section uh, looks like this shaded in area. So to find the volume um, obta obtained by rotating this half ellipse around the x-axis, we're going to want to integrate from uh, A to negative a, um, or integral, and then, well, let's just set up the integral. The volume will be the integral from negative a to a of, well, the air times the area of cross-section, which is the area of cross-section at time x, or at um, position x. is just equal to, well, this is going to um, be of radius, whatever the height is on the, uh, or whatever the y-coordinate is on the ellipse. Um, that'll be the radius of the circle that we get as we rotate that around. Um, so area is just going to be pi times y squared. But we want this to be a function of x, so we should probably um, Solve for y squared in terms of x. This will be pi times, let's see, we get uh, b squared times 1 minus x squared over a squared. So this will give you an area of the cross section um, at any position x. Now we integrate this from negative a to a. So we're really integrating from negative a to a, uh, the function pi times, uh, let's just multiply through, get b squared minus uh, x squared b squared over a squared dx. And this is, uh, let's pull pi out, and we get uh, b squared x minus uh, by the power rule, so we raise exponent by 1, so x cubed b squared over uh, the new exponent, so 3 times a squared. And we evaluate that from negative a to positive a. All right, so this is now pi times um, b squared times a minus, this is uh, a cubed b squared over 3 times a squared minus, uh, now we want to do the same thing. from, let's see, okay, hang on, before I do that, let's, I'm going to take a little bit of a shortcut. See that this is um, symmetric about uh, the x-axis, so the area that we get by uh, rotating the quarter ellipse that's in the um, upper right plane, so the first quadrant, is going to be the same as the volume that we get by rotating around the, set, by rotating the part of the ellipse that's in the second quadrant. So we can really just integrate this from 0 to a, which will simplify our 
computations a lot, and multiply by 2. Let's see if we do that, then both these terms go to 0, and this is actually our final answer right here. So this is part A to uh, figure out what the volume is for rotating just a general ellipse, uh, or half ellipse in the upper half plane around the x-axis. But one special case of, um, of an ellipse is just a circle, which is the case when A equals B. So if For part B, if A equals B, what is the formula? Well, we kind of hope that this would just be the formula for um, a sphere because we'd be taking the you know, semicircle in the upper half plane, rotating it around. That would just give us a, a sphere, so this formula should look familiar. So let's just say if A is equal to B, then uh, this is equal to 2 pi times, well, let's just use, um, well, here, let's set R equals A equals B. But we'll use radius instead of A and B. Well, this is just R cubed minus, um, well, get some cancellation here, so just end up with r cubed over 3. And so this is now, let's see, 2 pi times, so this is 3 thirds minus 1 third is 2 thirds. So 2 thirds r cubed. And that just equals 4 pi times r cubed over 3. And, yep, that looks like the familiar formula for the volume of the sphere. 